are streaming, so you can start anytime, okay? Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for, for letting me on your call today. Uh, really appreciate it. I've um, done a couple of these with Kelly so far, and she was kind enough to, to invite me to this group too. Um, my name's Chris. I'm with a, a company, small company called OrCam, and we make assistive technology devices. And I wanted to show you guys a brand new device that we have that is designed for people with uh, slight to moderate low vision, but also reading difficulties. So that could be a brain injury, it could be dyslexia, it could be autism, it could be you know any number of things that vote for somebody to be able to read. And uh, a little history about Orcam. Um, very interesting company. They're actually based in Jerusalem, Israel. And the founders were pioneers in technology that's in a lot of cars today. So you think about the backup cameras and uh, collision avoidance technology. Those guys were pioneers in that and they took what they learned from that technology and have applied it to assistive technology. Um, our main device was something for blind and people severe low vision. And then this device is brand new and it's for more for people, like I said, with other reading difficulties. So it's called the OrCam Read and it's about the size of a magic marker. Hi, Clem. Hey. Sorry guys, I had a little accident. I was trying to help be a construction worker. <laughs> Little technical difficulty. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's about the size of a magic marker. It's handheld, as you can see, and it's very simple in design. Um, it's got a little camera in the front that you can see there, and then it's just got a few buttons. On this is the on/off button a minus button, a plus button, and this round button is called the trigger button. Basically what it does is you point and click at anything you want to read and it takes a quick picture of that and it instantly reads it back out loud to you. So that could be any sort of printed material, a book, a magazine, a restaurant menu, a sign on the wall. Um, it even works on phone and computer screens. So what I'll do is I have a, I have my power bill printed out right here. And there's two modes that you can do. The first mode is going to create with a laser, it creates like a box and you can frame, basically frame the text or the material that you want it to read with that box. So it's ever inside that box, it's gonna take a quick picture and instantly read it back out loud to you. So, I was, if I wasn't interested in the whole thing, but I kind of knew what I wanted to see, which is basically like the date and the amount, I can simply say <coughs> what I wanted to read. Roberts, Dr. A, P, T, P, up, Georgia 30350, your current bill. Due in eight days, April 22nd, 2020, total PU, $56.41. Total due reflects pending. Schedule. So what it did was it framed that space that I wanted to read, took a picture, and it instantly reads it back out loud. And then, say I wanted to read a book or a magazine or anything else, I can simply press on the trigger button twice. That's gonna change it over to a cursor mode. And what that will do, it's basically like a laser pointer. And if you wanted to read this entire page, you could simply point at the very beginning, top left, it takes a quick picture. And now I can actually put the book down, put the device down, 
And it will continue to read that entire page because it took a picture of the whole page. And we'll read the entire page back out loud to you. So you can see how, how fast and accurate it is. Um, again, it works with any printed material. Um, it also works on phone and computer screens. Like I could pull my phone up, pull up an email here. Simply point at it. Chris? So screens as well. Chris? Yeah. I'm sorry I was running late. Uh, did you talk about my eye tool? Or is this read? I haven't yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just thought I know a lot of people have problems reading because of brain injury and stroke uh, and keeping a place on the page to begin mm -hmm. with. Uh, one of the things, I and mean, this is wonderful for that and for reading menus, that kind of stuff. I was really excited about it. Uh, the original device that has called my eye, which can also also recognize faces. Yep. So it can tell you it can tell you who's joining the group just by facial. Yep. Very good point, Clem. Um, so this is the my eye. This was our original device. Um, this was really designed more for people that are blind or have pretty severe vision impairment. However, we're finding that this is becoming very popular with that same group too. Um, the difference, as you can see, this is handheld. This one actually clips on with magnets to a pair of glasses. And so if I wanted to read a book, I could simply point. Charismatic beheaded all that some people just couldn't handle it and reacted with jealousy. It's just human, I suppose, but it's sad. So it works and basically like the same way. It takes a quick picture and then instantly reads that text. Um, this one does have the capability, as Clem mentioned, of facial recognition. So you can actually program, it's, it's really cool technology. Um, basically everybody's face is kind of like your fingerprint. We all have unique dimensions to our face. And what it does is it takes a bunch of pictures of the person's face, learns their face, and then you can name them. And then when they come up to you, it would actually announce that person's name. That's a very useful tool um, for those of us that had strokes. I've also noticed that um, the pointing thing would be difficult mm -hmm. for somebody that has dexterity problems. Um, so the eye one, actually, I can see being far more useful in, in a broader spectrum with stroke victims. Uh, survivors, we are survivors. <laughs> yes. That's right. Yeah, yeah. so. Um, yeah, they each, you know, so I've been working with this for about a year. This I've just been working with for a few weeks. Okay. So, and, um, you know, I reached out to Kelly just a couple weeks ago and she was kind enough to, to give me her time and consideration. Um, so I, I'm more used to, to dealing with uh, the communities of blind and low vision. So brain injury and stroke, and that sort of thing is pretty new to me. Um, I'll tell you some advantages and disadvantages of each. This one, you do need to, you have to wear glasses. Uh -huh. um, it comes with this mount. This is my personal pair of glasses, but I've got this mount put on it. The mount has magnets. And the device has magnets and that's how it connects. So you do have to wear glasses with this device, but that's good because it's hands-free. You barely know it's on, it's really light. It's right there. 
Um, and you just tap on the side or point at something in order to engage it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. My um, microphone right now. I'm like, just wow. <laughs> <laughs> I have a problem with, I, I think that everybody looks familiar sometimes. And so that would so help. <laughs> okay. Yep. Um, this one obviously is handheld. Uh -huh. um, a couple of cool things about both of them is that there's no internet connection required. Oh, so wow. all the information is processed within the device. So it works anytime, anywhere. Um, this one is gonna be a little bit more expensive. Um, we're coming out with with new pricing and new functions. Um, it's very interesting time right now for Orcam. Um, so just so you guys know, this one price is 1990, $1990. The base price for this one will be 2,500. Wow. Yep. So Jennifer, you mentioned, you know, the ability of people to, to be able to point this at something. Um, with this one, there is, you know, I've met with, with some people that have um, the inability to really control their, they might have tremors or shakes with their head or their hands. Right. So this would be really difficult for those folks to be able to, because you have to have pretty good control of your head. You have to, because remember, it's a smart camera. So you have to hold your head steady uh -huh. and you have to have a, a steady hand in order to operate it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and, and basically the same with this, except you don't, you, your head doesn't matter. You just need to know, you know, where to point and shoot at it. Okay. Yeah. Those are great tools. Those are fantastic tools. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's really exciting. I, you know, I love, I've met with so many people, especially you can imagine people um, that were born blind or have become blind or lost a lot of their vision and they haven't been able to read in years. They pick up this device and they're able to read their favorite book or Bible or whatever it may be again. And it just, it can be really life-changing. I lost yeah. a lot of vision and I did vision therapy. I was able to gain back 50% of my vision, which was astronomical. Wow. But that, I can see where that's super helpful because I do have periods where it kind of goes haywire for a minute and I have to like kind of get it back online. Mm, but Wow. Wow, good for you, Jennifer. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah that, that tool is like, oh my gosh. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, you know, there are other devices kind of similar to this that that read, except with those, you have to basically follow the laser. Right. That's more difficult. Where this you just point and click and it captures the entire document or the entire page and then instantly reads it back out loud to you. And the language actually is pretty good. It doesn't sound very choppy, you know, where sometimes it can be distracting. Yeah, you know, there, there's other apps and other devices out there that, that do similar things, but what I've found is they're very robotic and they, you know, they'll, they'll, they don't know where a sentence ends and begins. So sometimes it's even hard to understand because it just kind of reads everything. Yeah. They've yeah. done a really job with, really good job with these i think because it's almost intuitive on how it should be read like it when it comes to the end of a sentence it somehow knows to pause on a period and then start again um also just so you guys know you can point across the room at like a sign or a poster or something um it could be even mcdonald's menu behind the counter and it does work from a distance. So I'm gonna point, I've got my trade show banner back here. Um, and I've done this from across the room, which is probably 12 or 15 feet, but for here. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, it does work at a distance. Um, it even works on very small text or font. So I've got a prescription bottle here. 
and 7355 Roswell Road, Vienna, Georgia 30328 CVS call. So you can see how small the address is. Wow. Okay. Hey, Chris. I have a question. Will that yeah. work for a non right-handed person? Will I'm sorry, what was that, Jim? Will it work for a non righty or another who are lefty? I'm sorry, I still didn't understand. Will your device work for a left-handed person, especially the one that hit on the temple of the glasses? Oh, oh yeah, Gene, great question. So with these mounts, you can put that on either side. And okay. so if I had the mount on this side, yeah, you could just attach it right there. Yep, absolutely. Works the same way. Mm -hmm. And uh, the device itself is still the same, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the corner. Okay. Yep. Does um, it do? Sorry. And just so you guys know, just a, a few helpful things. Both devices come with a lanyard that you can attach to the device. A lot of people with, with very low vision or blind will like to attach their device to this and hang it around their neck so they know exactly where it is if they're not using it. Um, you could quickly you know, turn it on, turn it off, and then attach it right there. Um, that's also really important if it were to fall to the ground, it could be hard to find for somebody that doesn't have good vision. So you could always have it right there. Does it do other languages or how many languages does it do? It does. So my eye um, is actually in 26 countries right now um, in like 20 different languages. Um, the U.S. version right now also reads French and Spanish, um, but it is available. Um, it, Mandarin Chinese is coming out soon. Nice. Okay, good. Everything. Yeah, all the European languages, um, Arabic, um, Brazilian. Uh, I mean, the, the list is huge. Can you? Do you have to purchase each language, or does it uh, come that way, like with all the languages? Yeah. So right now, the the American version reads English and Spanish and French with the Maya. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the so read. The read right now is only English, but it will be soon in the next few months because we just introduced this. So the U.S. has become kind of the the, the beta testing uh, country for us. Um, but this will be available in other in other languages soon as well. Okay. Yep. And then charging is really easy. Just come with a wall charger, just like a a phone, mm -hmm. and you could actually detach that and it's just a regular USB port. So that would plug into your computer or other charging device. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Are you able to download upgrades? Yeah, yep. Um, so upgrades um, are automatically pushed through Wi-Fi. Right, okay. Um, something important to note, a lot of people ask about this. Um, it does not, since it doesn't connect to the internet, it doesn't send information out to the cloud or anywhere else. It also does not store information. Um, so you can't, you can't download a page from a book or a document and then upload it to a computer or anything like that, um, which is good and bad. The idea behind that is that in the workplace, you can imagine an employer being concerned about somebody using one of these in the workplace and security, right. confidentiality issues. Mm -hmm. um, once the device reads this page and then moves on to another page, it's completely forgotten what it just read. So it just reads what's in front of it that instant. It doesn't store that information. It doesn't send it anywhere. So. Um, somebody working in a medical office, for instance, you have to worry about HIPAA privacy concerns, right. um, financial institutions, other places of work like that. So there's no, there's no issues with security or privacy with it. How long does it start? Does it just read it once and then it's done? 
Correct. Yeah. Um, can you yeah. like rewind during that time that's reading it, or you just have to let it do its thing? Um, yeah, you can actually with the forward with the plus and minus buttons. If it's reading, say if it was reading a page in a book and you wanted to skip back a sentence, you would simply press the minus button and it would skip back a sentence. Okay. If you wanted to skip ahead, you press the plus button and it would skip ahead. Okay. So it's basically from the beginning to end, once it hits the end, it erases it. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. It's important to remember that it's basically a really smart camera. So people gotcha. talk about being able to watch TV with it or play cards with it or something like that. It, it's not going to work for that because it's taking a picture of whatever's in front of it. And whatever words it will read out. Okay. <laughs> yep. But then, you know, this one also does the facial recognition. Um, this one also does money too. So it will tell you if you're holding up a 20 or a $1 bill. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> also does, it also does product barcodes. Um, so, excuse me for a second. So just around the house, both of these devices can help you if you were in your kitchen and you weren't sure exactly what you were holding up, spaghetti. So, You can simply point, it'll take a quick picture. And then, <laughs> <laughs> with barcodes too, it actually comes preloaded with thousands and thousands of product barcodes. And it's interesting because each product Each product has a unique barcode. So what you can do is actually point at that barcode. So it instantly recognizes that product barcode specific to this and will announce whatever that product is according to the barcode. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the read will do that as well too. The grocery store will be so much faster. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, right now, I believe the VA has approved this as a, as a, uh, a product that can you can use for, I forget what they call it. Uh, Insurance? Yeah. I, that was my next question, Clem. Thank you. Yeah, does insurance cover this for people? Not, not all insurance, I don't think. I know the VA does. Okay. Yeah, yeah, great, great point. Um, so this falls under, it's called assistive technology. Um, hearing aid, reading devices like this all fall under the umbrella of assistive technology. And it's a shame and it's unfortunate, but most medical insurance and even Medicaid does not cover assistive technology. Watch me find a way. <laughs> I always say, no, I tell people, you know, it, it's worth asking um, every now and then, um, depending on your insurance, they will help or be able to cover it. And I tell people, the more people that we have asking their insurance companies about it, the more momentum will be towards them finally coming around and saying, you know what, this is, you know, people need this. This is this is not just a luxury item, you know, this improves people. Have. So always right. ask insurance. Um, Clem made a good point. We do a lot of work with, uh, with VA military vets. Um, and the VA will cover assistive technology devices. If you qualify as a military veteran, you know, Fantastic. Okay. But we're really hoping, you know, we're partners with like the national federation for the blind and the American college blind and that sort of thing and you know there's a pretty big lobbying groups so are you involved with lions yep okay good mm -hmm. yep 
Chris, if I want to call you, uh, where, where should we do it? Can you give me a number? Yeah, Joyce, um, I can give you my number. Um, so I'm based, I live in Atlanta. And as far as my, my business development where I work, I work in the states of Georgia and South and North Carolina. However, we do have other representatives throughout the country. So wherever you live, we have somebody in your area. Do you see my, my private message? Do you see my private message? Oh, um, let's see. Yes. Yeah, I will uh, reply to this, Joyce. Absolutely. And Chris, I have a question. Do you have a social media page? We do. Yeah, oh, yeah. We're big on Facebook. Um, we have a great website. It's simply orcam.com, O-R-C-A-M. And um, you can go there and we have like YouTubes, um, actual YouTube using it. Um, there's a guy that's blind that goes to the grocery store and uses it to go shopping. Um, so a lot of cool information. I'll make sure I post it in, for our social media page. Too. That'd be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can all see why I was excited about this product. It felt like we should. <laughs> get I, this, I'm tickled to death. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. So you guys think it could be could be helpful? Beneficial? Well, Chris, I was a blind at one time from after having my stroke. My father was blind due to glaucoma, and I know this would have made a difference. Yeah, <laughs> I really know because I've been there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it really it it, it does it can be a real life changer for people. Technology. Yes. Yeah, and it um. You know, normally I would be out actually <laughs> meeting with the Lions Club and letting people try it on. And, and there's nothing like seeing somebody's face light up when they're able to read again after years of not being able to. It's really cool. Um, yeah. And so, you know, we're, I've been doing more and more of these obviously now because of the situation. But, um, you know, once things get a little bit more back to normal, wherever you live, there is somebody probably close by or a, a, an organization that has one of these where you could go try it out yourself. Oh my gosh. How much memory does this thing hold? The, the, the one cam, the, the one you yes. wear on your glasses. Yep. So, um, remember it, it's not going to store in, any information that it reads. The only, um, memory that it has is with facial recognition. So it can actually store. Right, exactly. Yeah, 100 people. They 100, can learn 100 different faces. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, cool. Yeah, Thank it's you. It's pretty cool. I, I can't really show you online how it works, but it only takes about a minute to learn somebody's face. Basically, you're, you're standing about three feet away from them, and you hold the button down, and it takes a bunch of pictures of that person's face. And kind of like on CSI when they've got like half a fingerprint. Yeah, yeah put it together to make a little fingerprint. So it okay. takes a bunch of, bunch of pictures of the person's face, learns it in about a minute, and then it, it says, name that person. And you could say Gene or Clem or whoever it is. And then from then on, when Clem, if Clem were to walk into the room and you were to look up, it would see him and instantly, instantly say Clem. That is so cool. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm working with him on trying to get work out of the deal so that maybe every one of them could recognize me as beautiful. All right. <laughs> That's going to cost you a little bit extra, Clem, but it'll be worth it. <laughs> I don't know what he said. It all spaced out on me, but I bet it's funny. <laughs> Great, Chris, I sent you a message. Okay. You have to, okay. Okay. Wow. Wow, Joyce, 